Hi, my name is Paul, and I'm, I'm a chemist in drug discovery at Pfizer. And today, hopefully, I'm going to talk about why we crave salty snacks on a hot summer day. In particular, things like potato chips, uh, popcorn, French fries, things of high content, which we always eat when it's warm. Firstly, let's talk a little bit about salt. We're all familiar with seeing salt in the kitchen. It's one of those strange things that's, that's pretty good. It's either good or bad for you. You have to get the right amount of salt every day. As a chemist, I really like salt. Sodium chloride is the formula of salt, and it's one of the first things we learn about in school in terms of how sodium chloride is made. As I say, we have a daily allowance, a daily recommended allowance of salt, and it's about one tablespoon. What I wouldn't recommend is don't go into the kitchen now and take a tablespoon of salt and eat it because it's not going to taste very good. The reason why we need a certain daily allowance of salt is it's actually good for a lot of purposes in terms of our health. It helps with our nerves. It helps with our muscles. And one of salt's most important contributions, which we'll, which we'll talk about a little bit more today, is it helps liquid transport throughout the body, specifically water. Look at our bodies, what we see as arms, legs, heads, etc. But 60%, over 60% of our body is actually made up of water. As I said, salt has many benefits, but if we take too much salt, it also has bad implications sometimes for our health, in particular with our blood pressure. One thing to be careful about with salt is salt is in a lot of foods and we don't even realize it. For example, if you take a slice of pizza, it has about one third of our daily allowance of salt in. So if you take your three slices of pizza, you're pretty much done for the day. But there's a lesson there to learn as well. Salt is in a lot of food, but often you can't taste it. The flavor of salt is covered up by all the good things, such as the tomato, the cheese and pizza and pepperoni. So you're also taking in salt without even knowing it. So back to what we want to talk about today is why do we sort of crave salt when it's a hot day? Hot days and when we exercise, something happens. What you'll notice is you'll have moisture in your forehead when we're sweating. Our bodies are pretty smart and basically have a control panel of certain mechanisms to sort of keep us cool or warm us up at certain times. And sweating is part of one of these mechanisms. Sweating is, is a sort of way that the body uses to keep us cool. What our body does is it pumps water out onto our forehead and basically when that water evaporates it cools us down so it's like an internal air conditioning for our bodies however there's something kind of interesting about sweat what happens is if you let sweat drip into your eyes if you've been exercising very hard what you'll find is it stings a little bit you'll also find that if you just put water in your eyes that doesn't sting so there's something else in our sweat as well and also, if you're feeling really thirsty, and I wouldn't recommend this, if you sort of run your f finger down your forehead, what you'll find is it tastes a little bit salty. So that's the kind of one of the reasons. When we sweat, we're not just losing moisture, we're also losing salt from our bodies. And this is the reason why we crave salt on hot days. We're pumping salt out as part of the sweating process, and basically, we're trying to make up for the sweat of the salt we're losing by taking a salty snack, such as some potato chips. But what I told you about when we sweat is the fact is it's the moisture evaporating that leads us to cooling down. So why is the salt even involved? This is one of the body's uh, critical control systems using salt in terms of moving fluid through the body. When we sweat, we sweat out of something that's called a sweat gland. That sounds pretty cool, but what it really is, is just a little cylinder under the skin with a little tube leading up to the surface of the skin. The little cylinder has moisture in, and that's the moisture that's going to become our sweat. What you'll notice is we don't sweat all the time. So basically, we sort of have to have some sort of process that pushes the moisture out of the cylinder up to the surface of our skin. And this is where salt plays a critical role. What happens is our body sort of realizes it's a hot day, and sort of looks at the little cylinder and pumps salt into the, into the moisture in the cylinder. This is now one of the critical sort of processes which uh, monitors fluid control for our body, and it's called osmosis. Osmosis is actually probably one of the coolest things to say, and it's also one of the cool chemical processes in terms of how fluids move. What happens with osmosis is fluids move from areas of low salt concentration to areas of high salt concentration. So we have our little cylinder of moisture. On a hot day, salt pumps into the cylinder. And what happens is water follows it in to, change, to go from low to high concentration. As the water follows it in, drawn by the salt, 
the cylinder fills up and pushes the moisture up through the little tube to the surface of the skin where it becomes sweat. So we push the moisture out, but we also have salt in that moisture. And that's why we find salt in our sweat on our forehead on a hot summer day and after we exercise. Hopefully this explains why we sort of crave salty snacks on a hot day and when we're sweating. Thanks for joining. Please stay tuned for another lesson.